U.S. railroads have begun curtailments ahead of a potential nationwide strike by workers. Lawmakers in the United States are set to vote on whether to impose a tentative, a tentative agreement later today. We are joined by Baleji Gunter, uh, C Chief Operating Officer of HopTech. Um, it's part of the Carney Group, which is one company that's placing, paying close attention to these developments. HopTech is a transport and logistics company that uses technology to help fleets optimize their performance. Thanks very much for coming on the show. Can you give us an update on these talks? Who is actually in discussions right now to tr try to avert this strike? So, so what we are hearing is that uh, President Biden has asked the Congress to intervene into the rail strike and make sure that the rail strike doesn't happen given the impact the strike is going to have on the larger economy. So there's a flurry of activity that's going on behind the scenes as, as we speak. And, and Congress has basically said um, they would intervene to make sure that this strike doesn't happen. Uh, and they would basically pass a legislation that sort of uh, takes the uh, existing union agreement and, and make it into a, into a law that the unions and the railroads have to abide by. That's the last we have heard. Obviously, the unions are not very happy about this. And there's a discussion uh, on you know, how to avoid this and are there other uh, opportunities that might exist to either delay the strike, bring an arbitrator and so on. So those are some of the other conversations that we, we think are actually happening in the back, back scenes as well. How damaging would, uh, just remind us, what workers are likely to go on strike or could go on strike and how damaging would this be? The, the probability of the strike keeps increasing as more and more unions don't ratify it. And as we speak, it's... The, the probability is fairly high, and we have not really seen the unions doing much to prevent the strike. It's going to take a certain amount of legislative action or Congress stepping in to prevent the strike. The, it will be fairly damaging to the to the economy. I mean, I think there is a certain amount of um, slack in the system that could make the strike not be felt if it's going to just last maybe one, two, three days at yeah. most, considering that the strike is going to be over the weekend. But if the strike were to go beyond a week, um, we, we think that there's going to be a significant amount of uh, impact across all sectors of the economy. We've been hearing that tangled supply chains, uh, people have managed to fix some of the problems. So the, the, the backups in the system don't seem as bad right now, the freight system. Well, the, 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 there, are, there are some backups and maybe there are certain things, uh, the headwinds in the trucking industry that sort of provide a little bit of a slack as the rail uh, strike potentially happens. But having said that, there is so much freight that moves on rail, and we require 470,000 trucks, for example, to basically pick up the slack on the on the on the rail, and that level of uh, capacity doesn't exist. And for example, chemicals and gas movement, um, there aren't enough uh, you know tankers uh, that that are available on the on the trucking side to be able to pick up the the demand. There's, there will be a significant amount of inventory issues in certain sectors. Um, that would be more or less unavoidable if the, if the strike goes on for a long time. Yeah. Any other commodities that could be affected by, by a long-running strike? Anything else leap to mind? Um, I think the first thing that comes to everyone's mind is how does it impact the holidays? I think the mm -hmm. impact on holidays is probably not as high because all of the, uh, the stuff that needs to be for, you know, in place are already in place on the shelves. Um, Chemicals is going to get affected. One of the things that we have been hearing is that the um, uh, a lot of chemicals that are used for water treatment and water filtration purposes needs to uh, moves by rail, and it's primarily moves by rail. Mm -hmm. And if those things, you know, if there is, a, for example, an effect on uh, these chemicals not moving for two weeks, uh, many municipalities are going to actually run out of inventory, and there's going to be actually a, a bit of a crisis from uh, getting clean water to some extent. So there are some of these impacts that are not very visible but they could become huge impact um, if this rail strike continues. And on top of all of this, mm -hmm. we are just coming up from a, um, you know, a, a supply chain vulnerability that's been faced after the, after the pandemic. Mm -hmm. um, and, and these vulnerabilities are going to be exacerbated with the, uh, with the rail strike. It's, it's, it's going to show up the weaknesses in the, um, in the, in the transportation system, mm -hmm. uh, spot market rates we expect on the transportation side to, pry, uh, to spike. We expect capacity not to be available. It's going to actually, you know, maybe a temporary relief for people looking for long haul loads, for example, say from uh, Los, uh, Los Angeles all the way to Chicago. We, we see that that's going to be mm -hmm. a fairly busy market, for example. But 
but it doesn't really uh, um, you know solve the you know, trucking cannot pick up the slack uh, of rail not being available so we think that this is going to cause a, a bit of a crisis in terms of inventory and i think as i said before it's a question of how long it actually runs two three days may be fine a week is going to be already stretching it and two weeks in i think we are going to have a, a, a huge crisis on our hands